Hey guys, it's Wraith here. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the author of Everdark. Every week, I get together with the Everdark cast and we talk about things related to vampires, voice acting, and life. Sometimes I ask them questions, but sometimes they ask me questions. And by the way, we want to hear your answers to those same questions in the comments. So... We're entering the Everdark for the first time. One of the hurdles I thought vampires would always have would be keeping hidden from humans, especially now where everyone is so connected and there's a phone or camera in every hand, no matter where you are. So I thought, where could they hide? And I created the idea of the Everdark, a sort of pocket universe filled with dangers, wonders, and mysteries where the vampires could retreat to. In the modern age, Edward and Jay, do you think if vampires were real today that they would even try to keep hidden at all? Or would they be out and proud? Especially considering characters like Balthazar, who clearly relished the spotlight. I wonder whether they'd jump out and become the new apex predator and demand that they would become the be-all and end-all of human evolution. Uh, at the same time, we're all becoming, and the world's becoming more fluid and more out and more tolerant, um, slowly but surely. But I wonder how tolerant you can be of vampires sinking their fangs into people. If there's some sort of way for them to ask permission and say, hey, do you want to be a vampire? And people to be like, you know what? Yeah. Which I guess kind of is similar to what their acolytes do. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think if vampires were real today, I, I think it'd be impossible not to notice them. I think like anything, some people want to be in the light. They want to be surrounded by adoring minions and fans and acolytes and devotees and worshippers. And others are quite content to be the power behind the throne and stay in the dark and manipulate things. I think the scariest species on this planet is the human. I think if I had eternity to explore what I loved, to do it with people I loved, I think it would be humanity that would be the biggest thing that would scare me. The unreasoned response of mobs of humanity to changes. I think change scares humans. I think the dark scares humans because we don't know what's in it, just like the future. So I think that vampires would have to find a way to get away from humans because I think if humans found out vampires existed, they would be the ones that would cause the destruction, the riots, the witch hunts, the inquisitions, uh, looking probably for power, for a way to turn this gift or curse of vampirism into power. Humans, the reasons we can't have nice things. Wrecking the planet for the last how many thousand years. Well, really, I think you guys captured probably the problems that they would have. And that's why the Everdark is why some vampires never actually leave it. Although what's the myth of the vampires? Can they be captured by phone or camera? The typical thing is not being reflected in a mirror, right? Because they don't have a soul. If you can't be reflected in a mirror, you can't be captured on a, on a phone or anything. So you can't, your face can't be flashed across social media. That goes back to the mythos of silver and the involvement in the metal of the moon being holy and good in that the mirrors were silvered, the backings were silvered. So in those early stories, that's why vampires can't be reflected. But modern cameras don't have them. So... How does that work? I've always liked to thought it's uh, like the Iros bloodline, the ability to say, don't notice me unless they want to be noticed. I think that's a, that's a pretty great take that you might be filming a vampire. You might be taking a snapshot right now, but you never look at that photo again because the vampire reaches out, touches your mind and says, don't notice me. Correct me if I'm wrong here. That's how you've written this world, that the vampires have some ability to glamour themselves or to make themselves look different to the eyes of humans. It is a lot about that. Actually, when Julian is following some vampires to get to the Siren Blood Den, he's the only one who notices these incredibly beautiful creatures wandering down the street because they don't want to be seen. But they're using a power that they have, but it's something that they have to be conscious of using. Unlike the Iros, for example, Balthazar can just do whatever he likes because that's his strength. For other vampires, it's a little bit harder, but in general, that's how they live their lives, like in plain view, but hidden. And I think there's a fun to that. And I think that is also comes across in a lot of the experience of the vampire as romantic or erotic creature is the ability to be different in plain view and even be desired and worshipped and wanted, but the rest of the world doesn't know what you actually are. I think there's a really fun idea in that of being able to be as you are and do what you do and not be hunted down and murdered for it. Are we doing the murdering? 
Well, there's that too. Yeah. <laughs> but as I think that what really shows at least the strength of Balthazar and his ability with a uh, mind control, when they go up, when he and Christian go up to a, you know, that apartment and they're doing the hunting for the first time. And he's not at all afraid of what's going to happen, even though there's someone very violent there. Balthazar is like, no biggie. Like they will not remember. And I will make sure that this goes perfectly fine. He is not afraid of anything. Balthazar kind of has that energy though, where he, he takes life on in, in that way all the time. He kind of takes it in stride, doesn't he? He does. He really likes people too, which is interesting and knows them. Um, but he has no fear. He definitely inhabits the here and now, and he just really, um, how shall I say about his powers? They infuse him. He is that power. So he's never afraid of basically a human, but he might be wrong. I mean, you never know, but he's, he, cause he is a little arrogant as we know. What? It's not arrogant if you are that good. <laughs> That's right. Yes, Balthazar, we understand. <laughs> I hoped you liked this behind the scenes discussion with the cast and crew of the Everdark podcast. If you want to join the conversation, come to YouTube and tell us what you think in the comments. And just so you know, I'm not the only one reading the comments. The entire cast is too. And they're very eager and excited to hear from you. If you are already listening on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to get notified when the next episode of Everdark comes out.